what a big yawn. Oh, well, it's so dark on Magic Mountain this morning. When I woke up, I didn't want to get out of bed. And now I'm up, I want to go straight back to bed again. <laughs> you lazy thing. You're just like Mary. Who's Mary? The girl in the song. Lazy Mary, won't you get up? Won't you get up? Morris, you're singing. That's not like you. Well, it's a good way of waking you up. Come on, Doris, sing. Lazy Mary, will you get up? Will you get up? Will you get up? Lazy Mary, will you get up? Will you get up today? No, no, Mother, I won't get up. I won't get up. I won't get up. No, no, Mother, I won't get up. I won't get up today. I'll do this first. Lazy Doris, will you get up? Will you get up? Will you get up? Lazy Doris, will you get up? Will you get up today? I'm not lazy, Morris. No, no, Morris, I won't get up. I won't get up. I won't get up. No, no, Morris, I won't get up. I won't get up today. That's better. I'm wide awake now. I should think so, too. I love getting up early. My magic works terrifically well first thing in the morning. So does mine. I know it does. Hey, do you remember the other day when I made that super spell for Jane? We both made that spell, Morris. Oh, sorry. Mm, so we did. Shall I tell everyone the story? Oh, yes, Morris. <laughs> Jane's Surprise Pitter-patter, pitter-patter. It had been raining all night on Magic Mountain. I was snuggled up cosily in bed. So was Doris, and so was our friend Jane. Jane woke up first and looked out of her window. Raindrops were trickling off the trees and flowers onto the grass. Plop, plop, plop. All of a sudden, the sun came out from behind a cloud. Jane was dazzled for a moment and she closed her eyes. But when she opened them again, oh, what a lovely sight! There were rainbows everywhere. Beautiful, bright-coloured rainbows had looped themselves all over Magic Mountain. Jane ran to wake Doris and me. Wake up. Wake up, you two. Come and see what I've seen. <sighs> what is it? I mumbled. Magic Mountain is covered in rainbows. Come and look. Doris and I jumped out of bed and ran to the window. I'd love to have a rainbow over my bed, said Jane. Let's go and pick one and take it back to my bedroom. I laughed and laughed. <laughs> you can't pick rainbows or dig them up like flowers. <laughs> Jane looked sad. Oh, I did so want to have one shining over my bed. Doris and I went into a corner and whispered together. Jane, I said, Doris and I have a... I mean, we'll have a surprise for you in exactly ten minutes' time. So please go for a walk and then meet us in your bedroom. Jane looked more cheerful. All right, I'll go and look at the last of the rainbows. When Jane had gone, Doris and I got out our wands and spell books and ran to Jane's bedroom. We danced and waved and muttered and sang. Bing, bang, bong, rat a tat tat, let's have a rainbow, just like that. <whistles> then we 
he heard footsteps on the stairs. Jane was coming back. Quick, Morris, whispered Doris. Draw the curtains. I hope the spell has worked. Jane ran into the room. Why have you drawn the curtains? Close your eyes and we'll show you. Jane did as she was told and Doris and I pulled back the curtains. You can open your eyes now. And when Jane opened her eyes, what do you think she saw? Yes, over her bed was a beautiful rainbow stretching from the floor to the ceiling. Oh, it's lovely. How clever you are. You've made me my very own rainbow. You can only see it when the sun shines on your bedroom wall, I said. But it'll always be there. Hooray! cried Jane. I hope the sun shines again tomorrow morning and every morning. Good morning, Morris. Hello, Carol, and welcome to Magic Mountain. Oh, it's a lovely day now, isn't it? Yes, it's a good morning to say good morning. What do you mean? Listen, I'll tell you. Good morning when it's morning. Good morning when it's morning. Good night when it is night. Good evening when it's dark out. Good day when it is light. Good morning to the sunshine, good evening to the sky, and when it's time to go away, goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye! Morris, what are you carrying on about? That's what you say when it's time to go away. It says so in the poem. Goodbye, goodbye... Oh, go I'm feeling sleepy again, Morris. I know. Let's have another story. Shall we say a spell for one? <gasps> Ready? Yes. Bing, Bing bang, bang, bong, rat-a-tat-tat. -tat -tat. Let's, Let's have, have a story, story. just <laughs> like that. <laughs> I've got a story. <gasps> oh, the spell worked. <laughs> Hooray! Peace at last. The hour was late. Mr. Bear was tired. Mrs. Bear was tired. And Baby Bear was tired. So they all went to bed. Mrs. Bear fell asleep. Mr. Bear didn't. Mrs. Bear began to snore. Oh, no, said Mr. Bear. I can't stand this. So he got up and went to sleep in Baby Bear's room. Baby Bear was not asleep either. He was lying in bed pretending to be an aeroplane. <coughs> went Baby Bear. <coughs> oh, no, said Mr. Bear. I can't stand this. So he went off to sleep in the kitchen. Drip. Drip, drip, went the leaky kitchen tap. Mm. Went the refrigerator. Oh, no, said Mr. Bear. I can't stand this. So he got up and went to sleep in the garden. Well, you wouldn't believe what noises there are in the garden at night. Went the owl. <coughs> went the hedgehog. Ow. Ow. Sang the cats on the wall. <coughs> went all the birds. Oh, no, said Mr. Bear. I can't stand this. So he got up and went back into the house. Mr. Bear got into bed and closed his eyes. 
Oh, peace at last, he said to himself. <coughs> Went the alarm clock. Mrs Bear sat up and rubbed her eyes. Oh, good morning, dear, she said. Did you sleep well? Not very well, uh, dear, yawned Mr Bear. Never mind, said Mrs Bear. I'll bring you a nice cup of tea. And she did. must be difficult for anyone to sleep when the moon's shining. Not if you keep your eyes tight shut and the house is quiet. Perhaps that's why cows go flying at night. Why? Because cows don't have houses, silly. I'm not being silly, Morris. You are. Cows don't fly. They do in the song. What song? Shh, listen. Hey diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle, the cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such sport and the dish ran away with a spoon. See, cows do fly. Jumping is not flying, Morris. Hey diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle, the cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such sport and the dish ran away with the spoon. Everybody, it's the knees. I thought if I asked you two very nicely, you might make us all a cup of tea. Of course, Denise. Shall I put the kettle on? No. Let's say a spell. All right. Ready, everybody? Bing, Bing bang, bang, bong, bong fiddle dee dee, three lumps, lumps of sugar, sugar three, three cups, cups of tea. tea. Hooray! Tea. Hooray! Did you know you can make yourself into a teapot? No. How? I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here's my handle, here's my spout. When the water's boiling, hear me shout. Tip me up and pour me out. See, one hand on your hip makes the handle. Oh, yes. Hold the other arm out to make the spout. And we're teapots! Oh, I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here's my handle, here's my spout. When the water's boiling, hear me shout. Tip me up and pour me out. What shall we do now we've had our tea? Um, I know. Let's listen to a story. Shall we say a spell for one, Morris? There's no need. Carol knows a story that's got lots of magic in it. Yes, it's the story of Cinderella. Cinderella sat by the kitchen fire warming her cold little fingers. She'd been cooking and cleaning and washing since daybreak. Oh, goodness, I'm so tired, she sighed. Just then, she heard her stepsisters calling her. Cinders, where's our breakfast? 
Cinderella was pretty and her stepsisters were not. They were jealous of Cinderella and they were always cross and unkind. Hurry up, you lazy girl! But before Cinderella could go upstairs, there was a knock at the front door. Cinderella ran to answer it. There stood a royal messenger. He smiled when he saw Cinderella and gave her an invitation. Cinderella took the invitation to her stepsisters, feeling very excited. The prince was inviting all the young girls in the kingdom to a ball at the palace, a grand ball where there was to be dancing and feasting. That evening, Cinderella helped her stepsisters put on their best dresses for the ball. She pinned up their hair and powdered their noses. But Cinderella's face was still more beautiful than theirs. And what shall I wear for the ball? she asked. You? shouted the sisters. You're not invited to the ball, Cinderella. Huh! The idea! And they squashed themselves into their carriage and drove off to the palace. Cinderella went back to her seat by the kitchen fire. Two big tears rolled down her cheeks. Why are you crying? said a kind voice. Cinderella looked up. There stood the loveliest lady she had ever seen. Oh, said Cinderella, my, my sisters have gone to the prince's ball and left me behind. Don't cry any more, Cinderella, said the lady. You shall go to the ball. I am your fairy godmother and I am here to help you. Now, fetch me four white mice two lizards and a pumpkin. Cinderella ran to the cellar and caught four white mice. She picked the largest pumpkin in the garden and found two green lizards. Now stand back, child, said her fairy godmother. With a wave of her wand, she turned the lizards into two footmen in green coats and the pumpkin into a splendid golden coach. <gasps> oh. A second later, the four white mice had become four milk-white horses to draw the coach. With another wave of her wand, the fairy turned Cinderella's rags into a gown of gold and silver lace. And when Cinderella looked down, she saw a dainty pair of glass slippers on her feet. Oh, my! Off you go to the ball, said her fairy godmother. But remember, when the clock strikes twelve, my magic ends. Music filled the night air as Cinderella arrived at the palace. When she entered the ballroom, everyone turned to gaze at her. Isn't she beautiful? They whispered to each other. Do you think she's a princess? The prince too was dazzled by the sight of Cinderella. He led her onto the dance floor and the orchestra began to play. Cinderella danced and danced with the prince and forgot all about her fairy godmother's warning until the clock began to strike twelve. Oh, goodness, cried Cinderella. I must go. Wait, wait, cried the prince, and he ran after her down the palace steps. But all he found was a pumpkin and four mice and two lizards who ran away into the night. Then the prince saw something shining in the moonlight. It was one of Cinderella's glass slippers. Only her little foot will fit this slipper, he said. I will take it to every house in the land until I find her. A few days later, Cinderella and her stepsisters again heard a knock at their front door. It was the royal messenger and the prince, who didn't recognize Cinderella in her rags. I have made up my mind to marry the girl who can wear this glass slipper, said the prince. It's mine! It's mine! cried the stepsisters. But no matter how hard they tried, they could not push their feet into the little glass slipper. Then Cinderella tried on the slipper. It fitted perfectly. 
the prince gave a cry of joy. Oh, Cinderella, it's you! Her stepsisters fainted with surprise. <coughs> now you will never run away from me again, said the prince. And I will never want to, said Cinderella. Cinderella and the prince took the stepsisters to live with them at the palace. In time, each of the sisters married a footman in a smart green coat, and they were never cross or unkind again. Denise and Nigel will tell you a bedtime poem. <sighs> Here I am. The Red Blanket. I've got a blanket on my bed. It's long and wide and warm and red. Sometimes I put it on the floor and make believe it's something more. If I get a plate and a great big jug, my blanket is a picnic rug. When friends come round to play with me, we shake it to make waves at sea. If I pretend it's a cold, wet day, my blanket makes a hideaway. Then I stretch it tight from chair to chair and make a tent for two to share. One of the things I love the most is being a scary blanket ghost. Then I take the blanket off my head and it becomes the cloak instead. Before I go to bed and sleep, I pull my blanket up and peep. Maurice, are you ready for bed? No! I want another story! I want another story! When will you go to bed? Wait and see. Maurice, you're very naughty. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Not. Ah! Oh. Shh, you too. I'll tell you a story. Hooray! Shh, Maurice. The Useful Dragon. Once upon a time, there lived a dragon whose name was Como. He could breathe fire, and all the people who lived nearby were afraid of him. Whenever they heard him coming, they ran away and hid. They could always hear him because Como had six feet and wore three pairs of shoes at a time and every shoe creaked. So wherever Como went, the people were sure to know. One day, he met a little girl who wasn't a bit afraid of him. Why are you so fierce? She said. Why do you breathe fire when you see anyone coming? Well, said Como, I... Uh... Well, I don't know. I've never really thought about it. Uh, shall I stop being fierce? Yes, please, said the little girl, whose name was Susie. All right, said Como. I'll try. <laughs> They said goodbye to each other, goodbye, and Susie Susan. went home. Goodbye. By then, it was beginning to get dark, and Susie found that everyone was in an awful state, because the lamplighter, whose name was Charlie, hadn't lit any of the street lamps. He was still in bed. He stayed out so late after lighting the lamps the night before that he was still tired. So, he just stayed in bed and had a lovely sleep, and ate bread and butter under the bedclothes. The mayor, whose name was William, was furious. What is to be done about the lamps? Then Susie had an idea. She ran all the way to Como's cave and fetched him to the town and took him all round the streets. And he breathed fire on each lamp and lit it. How the people cheered. They were not afraid of the dragon anymore. They could see he was a friendly beast. And after that, Como came and lit the lamps every year when Charlie went on holiday. 
What a lovely story. I'm all sleepy now. Well, I'm bright as a button. But you said it's bedtime. You must be tired. I know one thing that always makes me sleepy. Oh, what's that? Singing our bedtime song, shall we? Yes, let's. When we go to bed at night, everything is easy. We've got no clothes to put away, so we've extra time to play, play, play. We don't undress, but we do have a spell. It goes like this, and it works very well. Yes, very well! <laughs> we don't have shoes, and we don't have socks. We don't have trousers and we don't have frocks. At the end of the day, we just can't go wrong with a rat-a-tat-tat -tat and a bing. Our pyjamas are on.